I have a problem. So I was getting ready to do another load on my freeze dryer last night. So I came up like I've done so many times before and I hit the start button and from back behind the freeze dryer I see this flash and the screen goes black. And I thought, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just toasted my freeze dryer. What is going on here? So before I did anything else, I thought, well, I need to double check my pump and the connections back here. And so I unplugged my pump and I plugged it directly into the wall, turned the pump on and everything was good there. So that's okay. So it's not the pump. It must be something behind the freeze dryer. I went to hit start the second time, but this time I was kind of watching for things. And as soon as I hit the start, Back behind here, there was another flash, but this time I noticed the flash came from where the switch is, and once again, the screen went dark. So I went ahead and, I went ahead and unplugged everything, and I thought, okay, I'll look at it, you know, when I get home from work. So that's where I am now. I moved the freeze dryer into my kitchen so I can get a better look at things. Now, the first time I turned it on, I saw a flash in this general direction here and the screen reset itself and I thought okay I'll check things out so I checked the back end of the uh, the premium pump I actually disconnected it from the back end and the pump works just fine nothing wrong with the pump the second time I tried to turn it on I I wanted to observe a little bit better and the flash was somewhere back in this area. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to remove this power cord and we're going to check things out. First thing you want to do, whenever there's a flash, it, there's going to be some arcing, usually carbon arcing, and you'll see some discoloration. So we're going to check inside the plugs here, check inside the prongs here, and I'm going to take an ohm meter and I'm actually going to ohm out this plug to see if there's any direct shorts. Now, if there was an actual direct short, it also would break my circuit breaker in my service panel. That didn't happen. So whatever is happening here is not bad enough to break the circuit breaker. So this is a multi-tester right here, and it has a lot of useful functions. Right now I have it on the ohms. So when I put these two leads together, it's going to make a tone and it's going to display zeros down here. So I'm going to take my plug and I'm going to put one contact on the uh, prong here and another one I'm going to put inside here. So I get continuity there. But then I want to check these other three things and make sure we don't have a direct short. So I got continuity here. I got the tone here, no tone, here, no tone. That's good. So I'm going to switch this over to the other side. We got a tone there, which is good. No tone, no tone. Now we're going to try the ground prong. I got tone in the ground prong prong that's good no tone in the neutral or in the hot so this pigtail is just fine no problems here our next step is we're gonna to have to take off the back cover by removing all the bolts all the way around except we're not going to remove this screw or this screw we're gonna leave these two in place and remove everything else I have the back panel removed and as soon as I did that I could see right down here on this wire and this wire is badly burnt. I mean it is crispy. In fact it's so badly burnt it just fell off. So that's the wire and that's what caused the arc. Now I can go out and just put a new end on this and, and slap it back on there but we don't want to do that because we want to find the root cause of what caused this to arc and burn the plastic and separate. 
So we could have a direct short somewhere in the system and we're going to try to find out where that direct short might be. This wire that burned out is the hot wire. So we have the hot wire, we have a neutral, and we have a ground. So the hot was the one that burned out and this wire right here goes directly up to the re relay board. I took off the top panel and then I took off the, the upper screw right here to allow this panel to fall, fall back a little bit. This panel can't be removed because we have the drain valve down here. So I only moved it back so I can get access to the screw here and the screw down here. So I have the relay board out of the way. I'm looking for any discoloration back on the back side and I don't see anything at all. Everything looks pretty decent. Uh, I don't see any problems on the front near the relays or the diodes or the LEDs or the power supply, but this particular wire right here is also discolored. So something got this wire right here very, very hot. So we need to find out, once again, find out why. Now it could have been as simple as a bad connection on this crimp joint. If this crimp joint wasn't crimped properly and was only holding par part of the wire, if it was thinner here or thinner down below and was not allowing the full amount of current flowing through, that point, that thin spot, would have got really hot and acted just like a fuse and would have got so hot that it would have gone molten and partially separated. And as it was separating, it would have arced. So that could be the problem. It could be very simple, but I want to cover all my bases and make sure we're not going to have a repeat problem. The next step I'm going to do, I'm going to check the resistance of this wire to make sure it's good now and it doesn't have any particular flaws or any high resistance that could cause a problem. So I'm going to get my one end of my ohm meter. I'm just going to slide it right into this. It stays put just like that. And then I'm going to drop down here to where it got burned off. Put my other piece here. And sure enough, I'm getting a tone, no extra resistance. So it seems to me that wire is just fine. I can't find any other signs of discoloration or marking on the relay board or anywhere else. So I'm going to come back here to where this was burned off and I went ahead and took off this plate here would allowed me to get to the back end of the switch. Well this wire right here is pr pretty well charred and so I'm going to come back about an inch and cut that off and that looks definitely like about a 14 gauge wire. And come back about a quarter inch and remove the insulation. Just going to give this a little bit of a twist here on all the wires. And I have a replacement female spade connector. It's an insulated one. So we're going to go ahead and slide that in and send it home. Now these are color coded. This is a color coded blue. And on this particular tool, I have a red, blue, and a yellow. And I want to go with blue, which is going to be this one right here. So it's going to be this crimp opening right there. So I'll slide that on here. Come down on the shoulder right about there. Give it a good old pinch. Squeeze it. And this wire is now, give it a little tug, is now back on. And we're going to go ahead and put it back onto this circuit right here. Now, if you can do something like this, it'd be best to take a picture of that, knowing what, what, where you took the wire off. It's always a good thing to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and power this up, and hopefully everything will be okay. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to measure the amperage of this particular wire just to get a, an idea of what reading I should be receiving on this. I just heard the click of the relay up on the relay board and 
the display, the harvest right display is on and it show it shows it is loading and it is now there up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button. And so far things are looking good. And I am pulling, well, it was about seven and a half amps and that's just the initial charge, but it's gonna settle back down here in just a moment. The only thing that's running right now is go is the uh, freezer, or I could say the compressor, and we're going to see where this takes us. And I have a theory on what could have happened here, and I'll share that with you in just a moment. Okay, so looks looks like this is just just a little bit over four amps. Now I'm going to touch this wire. I'm going to hang on to this just for a minute or two, staying away from these other contactors. I want to see if this wire is heating up because whatever sent this wire to arc and to melt, something got hot enough to melt the uh, insulation. And so far, everything seems like it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'm going to share with you the theory of why I could have had a problem. So this is my old relay board and there's always a potential problem when you're pulling these contactors off. It's kind of hard to grip all the way down here on this insulation. Now I have this turned off so everything is de-energized. But when you're trying to pull these wires off it's hard to get down here and grip where you should grip. It's always easier to grab this wire and yank it off. But by doing so there's always a possibility of breaking filaments inside the wire. And if those are broken, if you go from a, say, a 14 gauge to a 16 gauge or smaller because you have broken wires inside, that's gonna be the weak spot and that's where you can generate some heat. So I'm just guessing that's what happened, that the, the connection between the wire and the blue connector here got damaged it wasn't holding like it should and it got hot, melted, and eventually arced and the uh, wire became an open. So pretty simple repair. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, last thing I want to do is have to lose my freeze dryer for a number of days while I'm repairing it. So this just gives you an idea of what to look for when you have a problem. Now when you do have a problem with your freeze dryer or any other device, you kind of have to approach this logically. There's no magic fairy dust involved in here. Everything is going to be logical, so you kind of have to approach it that way. You look for telltale signs, check the resistance, look for damage, and if you do that, I think you'll be more successful in whatever your repairs might be. So I'm going to have to put this back, put the top on, the back on, and uh, start another cycle. Well. Thank you for your time. I hope maybe this was helpful and uh, I'd like to hear your comments and once again, go forth and freeze dry the world.